Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? James here from Divers Ready, back once again with yet another quick tips video where we try and cram pack as many scuba tips as we can into five minutes or less this week on the subject of underwater lights. Yep, we're back again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button. These quick tip videos have been a big hit with you guys. Let us know in the comments below what video would you like to see us make next. I'm just gonna go for it. I mean, like, underwater lights. Yeah, I carry an underwater light with me on every dive. If it's bright daylight with hundreds of feet of viz on a shallow reef, I still have a light with me. Why? Because a light is an essential piece of emergency equipment. If you get blown off a dive, if you're dealing with an underwater pro problem and you get caught in strong current and just blown off the dive and the boat captain doesn't see you float away into the ether and the search parties are launched, a light is a very useful piece of emergency equipment to have with you to be able to signal to your potential rescuers. So I always carry a light with me regardless of the dive. I always have it fully charged, check the batteries and just it's, it's a no-brainer. There are basically four different styles of underwater light, three of which I have here for you. Uh, one is the handheld barrel style, which is, you know, the pencil light style, whatever you want to say, normally with a press or push button control. Um, this is an LED version by Tovatech. Uh, I carry this one on every single dive that I do. I love this light. Next up, you have a piston or lantern grip light. This is a uh, a handheld light that's designed for use on night dives and so on, where you're gonna have the light on from the start to the end of the dive. Um, long battery life, huge battery cells, LED power and all that kind of stuff. Um, nice compact units, these things used to be huge. Um, you can also get ones that have a lantern grip where the handle's on the top. Um, so yeah, great for night diving where you know you're gonna be using them all the time. You have a uh, wrist-mounted light, very popular these days with LED technology where you're getting a lot of power and a lot of lumens, we'll talk about lumens in a moment, in a very small housing with a long battery life. Um, and then the last type of light, which I don't have here to show you because mine's actually out for service at the moment, is the canister light where you have a huge battery pack that's stuffed into some kind of an aluminium tube and then a power cord, which is environmentally sealed, obviously, and a wrist-mounted bulb head. So those are the basic styles of light. How do you mount each of these? Well, as you can tell from this one, I bolt snap that off onto a D-ring and it is stored normally here on my left chest D-ring and secured to my harness until the time that I need it. Um, it's a backup light or an incidental light on a recreational dive, so I don't need it out all the time. If I'm going on a night dive and I know I'm gonna turn my light on before I get off the boat and not turn it off again until I'm back on board, then a pistol grip light like this is ideal. You've got a wrist strap and you're gonna have it in your hand the whole dive, so that is not an annoyance. And then the wrist mount lights look something like that. Um, I like these for wreck diving. I use these a lot here in South Florida on wreck tech dives where I know I'm gonna use the light for a long portion of the dive, but maybe not all the, light, all the dive. So I have the ability to turn the light on and off again in the water and it's nice, compact and leaves my hands free. Canister lights, they have a burn time three or even up to five hours uh, are really for long penetration dives in wrecks and caves where you know you're gonna be doing at least a very, very long tech dive. There is really no need for a recreational diver to invest the money in a canister light at the beginning of your diving career because you will have other gear priorities and a canister light is, is overkill at the recreational level. Interesting thing about the three flashlights that I've got for you here today is they all have a different style of battery. The pistol grip here, actually you remove the lens and has just disposable batteries. I suppose you can buy rechargeables to go in there, but it doesn't come with it as standard. The Tovatec has a battery that you remove by unscrewing the end cap, and then that sits in a battery charger, which just plugs in to a simple USB. And then the wrist-mounted light and motion solar light here uh, has a plug-in, so you just attach it and plug it in through a mains outlet, and that battery is factory sealed. Next up, how many lights should you have on a dive? Well, as I said, I always have one light on every dive because I believe it is a piece of emergency kit, particularly if it's got a strobe function, that's gonna help you out if the dive goes south. If you are on a night dive, I do not buy into this 
theory that seems to be floated around the Caribbean that you need one light per diver and one backup per buddy pair. No, if you're on a night dive, each diver needs a primary and a backup light, and that's just what it is. Probably one of the most important decisions you're gonna make when buying an underwater light is how many lumens do you need? But first, what are lumens? Lumens are a measure of brightness spread over area. So brightness we measure in candelas. One candle is one candela. If we take the amount of light that one candle gives off and spread it over the given area, in other words, the cone of light that the torch gives off, then that gives you your lumens. We used to use watts, obviously, to measure light bulbs and lighting in general. Watts are not a measure of brightness, they're a measure of power. So it used to be the more power you had, the brighter the light was. Nowadays with LED technology we use less wattage but get brighter lights so that doesn't really apply. All you guys really need to know is you should buy the most lumens you can afford because then that flashlight will be the most useful. So what about strobes and glow sticks then? Strobes absolutely I use this little fella here it's called a glow tube I'll put a link in the description below if I turn it on and off three times the third time I turn it on I get this little pulsing blue light um, and I use these to mark my buddy on a night dive so I can find my wife very useful for that uh, I also clip these off onto my stage bottles if I'm going to remove my stage during a tech dive to return to them later I use these as a little marker beacon so absolutely very useful user changeable AAA battery great little thing to have and not very expensive at all back in the day we used to use something that looked like this this was a single use uh, plastic glow stick it has a chemical inside you snap it you shake it um, yeah we don't use these anymore single-use plastic chemicals not good not good I had to go and dig this one out of a drawer I haven't used these in a very very long time um, yeah don't don't do it there's a better way so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I hope you enjoyed this quick tips video where I give you some of my buyer's guide advice to underwater lights. Uh, different styles of lights, different luminosities and uh, attachment points. Hopefully now you'll be able to pick the underwater light that is right for you. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready Quick Tips video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.